Uh, this is Michelle Keith, Chair of the Board of Health. It's September 19th. It's uh, now 5.16 p.m. Going to open up the meeting uh, with a uh, roll call. Michelle Keith is present. Richard Romero. Richard Romero is present. And Emily Michelle Olmstead. Present. Fantastic. Okay. We're going to have to go into executive session. Um, in reference to the 100 Woodcock Road, City of New Bedford firing range to, dis to discuss strategy with respect to pending potential and threatened litigation. Um, if it, it, it's basically it's discussing this in an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on uh, the litigating this particular position. Um, and we um, are allowed to go into the um, executive session and as the chair, I so declare that we should be in executive session. So um, I make a motion for us to go into executive session to discuss the 100 Woodcock Road firing range issue. Um, could I please have a second? I'll second. Okay, fantastic. Michelle Keith votes yes. Richard Romero, how do you vote? I vote yes. Okay, and Emily Michelle Olmstead, what's your vote? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so fantastic. The motion passes unanimously. Does everybody note that this meeting is being recorded? We're just waiting for uh, Chris Michaud to get back in the meeting. He was contacting Dartmouth Community Media to let them know that we had come out of executive session. So we're just going to wait a few minutes until Chris can give us the thumbs up that he's back and he's present. I am present. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. So now we get to start the meeting up again. We had a 531 appointment, and I apologize for us being 10 minutes late. We did have uh, a bit of some uh, delays in getting into executive session. The 531 appointment is the continued notification of enforcement for installer Gary Nichols for Plat 41, Lot 5390, Fisher Road. Is anybody present for this particular appointment now? Yeah. Okay, hearing no response at 5.41 p.m. Sorry, I was muted. Jason, the neighbor, is here. Okay, Jason is the neighbor. Okay. Um, but no Mr. Nichols. Madam Chair, I do see a 781. I will, um, I will ask them to unmute to identify what their interest is, if that's okay. Okay, that would be great. So if your number is 781-801-4942, please unmute yourself if you're here on behalf of or for Gary Nichols, installer permit enforcement. Okay, yeah. hearing Come hearing no here. response at five forty two, we're going to just um you know move forward with the discussion on this. Um, Mr. How do you say your last name? Brialt. Uh, Bro. Brout, Mr. Bro, thank you so much for being here, and thank you for waiting. Is everything okay with your property? Uh, everything's okay now. I don't know that anything's changed next door, but everything's okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that, fortunately, that, we haven't had any rain, rain, right? So. <laughs> yeah. But so far, so good. Yeah, they built a, um, I don't know, what do you call that, Robin? Um, a berm. berm. They built a, like, they meaning the neighbors built a berm, not somebody else. They just basically put a pile of dirt around to try to block the dirt, any uh, rain runoff that might come off. And again, for the little bit of rain we've had, that's worked. But um, but in respect to that, I don't know if, if the other piece that was discussed last time, which was the, I think it was called the as is, has been done. I don't know if that's been done or no, not. No, no. Um, as of, um, Chris, did we get anything? I know as of September 16th, we received nothing and we asked for the as built within a week of the last meeting. There has been no communication since the last meeting. Okay. So we don't have the as built, um, Mr. Bro, okay. unfortunately. Um, but so far, so good. The property's okay. Um, you know, we did suspend his license back, I think it was in June. And um, I'm just very, very disappointed. I've tried my very best to give uh, Mr. Nichols the chance to come in here and, and, and make it right. And I mean, fortunately, they did go and they did fill it in. But, you know, the fact that 
he hasn't brought in the as built and he promises the as built is just more evidence of of him not responding to the the board of health and, and the manner in which he's supposed to respond so i'm going to ask richard and emily to to give your thoughts on this i mean i i don't know if we should extend the suspension through december if we should extend it through next june um you know i, I i'd like to get your thoughts um richard um what are your thoughts on this yeah, it is disappointing that he hasn't come through. Um, I would be, you know, if, if we do suspend his license, how would they repair this? And secondly, how would it affect uh, Mr. Bur Burrow's property? Should it yeah. just be left like that? You know, it, it, it's currently suspended. I, I always get confused mm -hmm. with this too because I'm always thinking about how long into the future we want to go. Right. It's yeah. currently suspended, you know, pending him making all the corrections and doing what he's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But at this point, I don't think he's going to do what he's supposed to do. We've been very, very patient, you know. So now I'm thinking, okay, what's our action? Do you know what I'm saying? Um, Chris, um, can you answer Richard's questions? What were your questions again, Richard? Um, how, how can we ensure that Mr. Burroughs' property does not get any damage or any uh, runoff from the unfinished work? You know, um, how are we supposed to rectify that for both the resident and also the neighbor? Sure, thank you. So there are two matters at hand here. Um, so one, it would be the grading of the system and whether or not that that grading meets the requirements is it too steep um for example in that section of three tenths of title five is three ten cmr fifteen two fifty five within that section not only does it specify how a system is um you know graded when it's a raised system you know that side slope and how it kind of feathers out to mm -hmm. meet the existing land there's also a requirement where there is a minimum setback so if the toe of the slope, where the slope finally comes down and terminates into the existing ground, is less than five feet, then a swale has to be provided. So if the, if the grading extends to within five feet of the property line, then a, then a swale has to be provided to direct the, the runoff away from the adjacent property. So what we do know here affirmatively is that, you know, the system and a significant area beyond the toe of the slope does exist such that, you know, the five foot does not come into play here. So, right. you know, as far as our code, um, we've done as much as we can um, to protect the down gradient neighbor um, because we're limited by 15,255. Um, and I've conveyed that to their attorney um, a while back uh, attorney Jim Marsh. Um, so now it's just a matter of, you know, has Mr. Nichols satisfied the board's expectations as a licensed septic system installer with his performance on this system, which began around last October uh, with the construction of the system in a relatively short amount of time. Um, but then it was the finishing of the, the grading on and around the system which has taken so excessively long. Um, and at the last meeting, I'm just kind of giving a whole summary on, on the site. Um, there was still some question as to whether or not this side slope grading uh, met the three to one requirements in which Mr. Nichols said that he would provide it as built. The reason for the three to one, which is specified in, in 255, is that as an engineered accepted um, slope where it will vegetate and you will not have slide. If you have too much slope, if the slope is too steep, even the roots of the grass cannot hold and it will slide. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, and the reason why we don't want slide to occur is it would, if we had slide, then you would end up with erosion and then erosion would get progressively worse. So that's why um, we have that three to one requirement embedded in Title V. So that's the outstanding issue. Does that answer your questions, Richard? Um, I'm more like, how how are they going to be able to repair this? Uh, I understand the grading and all that. Um, if we suspend his license, will they be able to find somebody else to, to fix this? Stuff, basically, doesn't suspend the job, just suspends their um, 
the installer's license. So that will be an obligation, unfortunately, on the owner of the property mm -hmm. to remedy with this office. Okay. Okay, so Gary Nichols will no longer be responsible. The owner will be responsible. If I may. Go ahead. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm asking. So yeah, well, we don't provide civil or you know legal advice. Um, you know, certainly, you know, if there's any um consequences as to the status of the system that Mr. Nichols did not finish up, that would be for Mr. Meniz, who owns the property, to seek legal recourse on for whatever harm may have come his way from having to fulfill. The completion of the system from which Mr. Nichols was supposed to complete. I I think for me, I, I I'm understanding Richard's concern because I have a similar concern. We don't want to um de incentivize Mr. Nichols from doing we want to be able to give him some sort of incentive. Okay, you know, but also, you know, thread that needle about respecting the board. You know, but some sort of incentive to do what he's supposed to do so we can all move on from this and not be wasting all of the town's resources on something that should be simply already have taken care of. Um, so is there any way we can incentivize him more than what we've done? Because if we if we just suspend it through next June. I mean, I don't even I don't even think he can go and take care of it. Uh, uh, what, what are your thoughts on that, Chris? You know, at this point, you know, the board has been involved with this since June. But, you know, staff here has been involved with this. Yeah, huge, huge amount of hours. Yeah. And at this point in time, you know, I I don't think there's anything that we can do to ins to, to, to coerce interests to resolve mm -hmm. this. You know, I, you know, in December, I'll have been with the town for 29 years. And I have never in my time seen a situation approach the amount of efforts or half or a third of the amount of efforts that we have undertaken to try to get an installer to subordinate to the board and do what they promised to do when he signed the disposal works construction permit agreeing mm -hmm. to complete the system. So, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I think at this point it's, it's, it can be good to have concern for Mr. Meniz, but at a certain point, I don't, I think we have to realize that we're not the venue for the owner who, and his civil harm and that, you know, that needs to be remedied mm -hmm. in a different venue. Um, and certainly we would, you know, our records are our records. And I don't think it would play out well if Mr. Minis decided to take that route um, mm -hmm. with how Mr. Nichols has performed on this system. Excellent. Um, Richard, are your questions answered and, and, and that's if, yes you know we still have to make determinations and whatnot and whatever requirements so that's all these are all uncertainties about it uh this you know this discussion here is not about the compliance of the system it's about mr nichols performance as a licensed mm -hmm. emily michelle do you have any thoughts or questions um i'm in favor of revoking uh his installer's license for two years if we were to do a year it would really be closer to nine months at this point and um you know i mean chris said it exactly what i was you know from heard from his office is he hasn't seen cases like this this is atypical it's just not it's not reasonable to have allowed the system to have been uncovered since october and just the amount of time they tried to give him a second chance and it was it was not used so i i think i am in favor of revoking the installer license for two years and you don't have any other questions I do not. Okay. Um, Richard, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, I agree with Emily Michelle that we would, I think, um, revoking for a lengthy, lengthy period of time. And I think, um, I'm not sure whether the light of fire under him, but I, I think, um, you know, it, it will let it be known that the job needs to be done. You know, it affects a lot of people. So, okay. Um, could I have a motion? Uh, motion to um, revoke Mr. Nichols's license for a period of up to two years. 
starting when would be a good starting point it was started in june so we because it's technically suspended right now okay so we would be doing it for two years from this pri this past june or this june okay. of this year revoking it as of june of 2024 okay i second that motion michelle keith votes yes richard how do you vote i vote yes and emily michelle how do you vote yes okay fantastic so at five fifty four. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chris. For clarity, you know, with the two years, you know, it began in June of 2024 and will extend through the date of the board meeting in June of 2026. Okay. Oh, that's too bad, but we tried. We we really did. So, um, I guess we'll move on to the next uh, new business um, agenda A: the minutes of August eighth, twenty twenty four, and the minutes of August twenty first, twenty twenty four. I'd like to make a motion to accept. Does anybody have any feedback or comments on the minutes of August eighth, twenty twenty four? Okay. No. Um, I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes of August 8th, 2024. And I think, Emily, were, were you in that one? Or were you, who, who was, somebody was not in that particular meeting. I was absent, so I was going to abstain okay. from the vote. So it would be, exactly. So um, Michelle Keith votes yes. Did, did I get a, a second on that? I'll second that motion. Thank you. And Michelle Keith votes yes. Uh, Richard, how do you vote? I vote yes. And then Emily, Michelle? Abstain. Epstein. Okay, fantastic. And then the minutes for August 21st, 2024. Um, do we have any feedback on that? Okay, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes from August 21st, 2024. I have a second. I'll second. Okay, I second from Emily Michelle. Okay, fantastic. And um, I believe I was Michelle absent from that one. Yes, you were absent. Michelle Keith votes yes. Emily Michelle, how do you vote? Yes. And then Richard? You're abstain. going to be abstained. Fantastic. So we're all set with that. Now, 482 Fisher Road, thank you so much for waiting all this time. I apologize greatly for the delay. So it's Plat 37, Lot 20, review of the subdivision for comments to the planning board in accordance with MGL Chapter 41, Section 81U. Chris, did you want to update us on this? Sure. Thank you. Okay, thanks. So... The subdivision of land is controlled by the planning board. Uh, so if you have an existing approved way uh, like Slocum Road and you have enough area and frontage to, to carve out lots, then that would be through the approval not required process. Chris, I just have a quick question. I'm sorry to interrupt. Is there anybody in the waiting room? Because we don't, the person was here earlier for this issue. And I'm wondering if they're still waiting in the waiting room. Uh, nobody was here and everybody is gone. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. So that would be an a and R. So that's an approval by right. Uh, that is not what is here. Um, for this project here, located at Assesses Map 37, Lot 20, is a large parcel of land on Fisher Road. From that large parcel of land, they are going to carve out seven residential house lots and those lots because fisher that area of fisher road does not have any municipal utilities public water or public sewer would depend upon on-site wells and septic systems mass general laws chapter 41 section 81 u allows when a subdivision is created from a proposed way for a board of health to make comment to a planning board. And if there are factual uh, findings of the board of health that res that relate to our jurisdictional interests, then we can request conditions upon the plan. So in this case here, because this parcel will need on-site wells and septic systems, my recommendation to the board would be to require a condition upon the plan that no lot shall be built on lots one through seven without prior written consent of the Board of Health that an approved water supply exists of sufficient quantity and quality 
and is capable of supporting a subsurface sewage disposal construction, a subsurface sewage disposal system. At this time, there's been no demonstration that these lots can support that. That condition upon the permit would be binding and prevent the issuance of a permit until a building permit until such time that has been demonstrated to this office. That is necessary because the building code has provisions within it that provide for the issuance of a permit within 30 days if all of the terms of the building code and zoning have been complied with. So we wanna make sure of that because we don't wanna see new homes being constructed out there if they don't meet the setbacks and that they don't have adequate water. Um, this is something that the board has customarily done um, when we had a lot of subdivisions going on in the 90s and early 2000s. Um, it's been a number of years probably I would say since 2016, 17, since we've seen one of these um, form C subdivisions that allows on septic, that allows us to make these comments. There's certainly been others on sewer. Um, the only other unique um, aspect of this subdivision that I wanna raise to the board at this time is that Dartmouth has what's called the OSRD, the off street residential development, which is another word, another uh, term for cluster subdivision. So our zoning provides that in this area, you have to have two acres of land. But if you can demonstrate that a lot can support a two acre, seven two acre lots, the OSRD provision allows you to reduce it down to a much smaller size. The advantage to that is, is that you end up with less infrastructure, less yard area, more natural space. So it's a win-win for the town um, because of the preservation of open space and uh, the benefits of that, both for you know people with open space, but also for the um, natural attenuation of pollutants that um, that natural space can um, provide. However, Title V, the regulations that apply to the siting and design of septic systems, has a component that requires a certain amount of land area when you're in what is called a nitrogen sensitive area. These lots are in a nitrogen sensitive area because they depend upon on-site wells and they'll be disposing of the sewage on the same lot. What does that mean? That means that the lots are limited to no more than one bedroom per quarter acre, which is 10,000 square feet by Title V's. So some of the lots are below 30,000. So they will be limited to, based on the code at face value, they'll be limited to smaller size homes. If they wish to build larger homes with more than two bedrooms or whatever the square footage is that allows, then they're going to have to seek an approval from the Board of Health, either as putting in an innovative alternative septic system that allows for a greater number of bedrooms, or what I suspect would be a nitrogen loading and aggregation plan, which is a demonstration to the Board of Health that they have reserved land that has certain restrictions against it, where they are going to get that additional land area off site. So I would believe that they're gonna do that against the open space parcel. Um, so at this point in time, it's too early to know, but that is a comment that I can make to the planning board as part of any um, conditions or notations that the board would wish to make in the review of this application. Okay. And that's all. Okay, fantastic. Thank oh, you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry? I know that I said a mouthful and that's an awful lot. So oh, I'm sorry. Okay, no, no, that's fantastic, Chris. Um, Richard, do you have any thoughts or questions? Uh, so, uh, yeah, the, the builders are aware that they're going to need to put in a well system for each each home, correct? Or they're going to be told uh, after afterwards that that's what's going to happen. 
Um, the the builder is definitely aware of uh, the requirements for on-site wells and, mm -hmm. and septic systems. And I've also brought it up um, a number of months ago when this project was just kind of floated by on a very, very preliminary basis that, mm -hmm. you know, those lots are undersized. And, you know, I really encourage you to get to the 40,000 because, um, you know, there's, there's other issues at play here that, you know, we will need legal counsel on if they present us with a nitrogen loading and aggregation plan. Um, and that's issues within the approval process um, mm -hmm. and the requirements that the planning board has on the open space. So they have performance requirements on the open space as to you know what you can, can't do with it and how that land conveys, which also includes um, conveyance without any encumbrances on the title. Um, so would, and because a nitrogen loading and aggregation plan approved by a board of health does require a restrictive covenant against the credit land. So if in this case here, they went, you know, the credit land was the open space, would that be an encumbrance? And would that withstand or be negated by any prior approvals of the planning board? Um, so I will certainly bring all that up now because I'd rather flush this out yeah. um, specifically, but you know, it's, it's still a little premature for us to, you know, invoke counsel on it. You know, I hope they investigate it and they investigate it with the planning board. And, you know, that's the hope. But, you know, it, it has been mentioned and it will be mentioned again. Okay. Richard, do you have any other questions? No, I do not. Okay. Thank Emily, Michelle, do you have any questions? Um, a comment. Um, yeah. Just that, um, yeah, this, this is what I'm very interested in as far as, you know, <laughs> nitrogen and wastewater. So, um, I, I support Chris's idea that um, we're at step one here where we request the planning board basically involve us um, when it comes to all those details that, that they have to go through. And um, I do have an idea for, for wording for a motion if and when we get there. Okay. Okay. It, so you, that would be fantastic. If you make a motion, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Okay. So uh, finding that lots one through seven are located on Fisher Road in the town of Dartmouth, where no access to public sewer or the town's public water supply exists, and that no demonstration has been provided to establish the ability of lots one through seven to support on-site wastewater disposal or a private well. I move to request the planning board to place the following condition upon the subdivision plan at assessor's map 37, lot 20, as provided by Massachusetts General Laws, chapter 41, section 81U, that the plan shall be conditioned so that no building permit shall be issued without written permission of the Dartmouth Board of Health that a potable water supply of sufficient quantity and quality exists and a sewage disposal system can be installed upon the respective lot in accordance with 310 CMR 15 and the Board of Health Supplemental Regulations to Title V. That is beautiful. I second that motion. <laughs> <laughs> And Michelle Keith votes yes. Emily Michelle? Yes. And Richard, how do you vote? I vote yes. That was the most beautiful motion. I, I, like Chris was uh, give Chris is extremely <laughs> helpful when I pick his brain. So I I can't really <laughs> take the credit. It's that very was helpful beautiful. and very informative. Very well done. <laughs> you Thank you so much. Picture. <laughs> That's fantastic. So I guess we're done with this issue. I'm sorry that the folks from Fisher Road weren't able to be here. Um, so now we're moving on to old business. It's the um, update on Antonio Raposa and Paul Raposa, Plat 39, Lot 11 at 709 Russell Mills Road, domestic animal permit for the 30 chickens, the 20 ducks, the one peacock and the 12 geese. I guess, Chris, we've heard back from conservation. Yes. So, you know, just to kind of recap, mm -hmm. you know, it's held off on um, action on this domestic animal permit going back, I believe, into late March or early April, because we had to wait and see what would happen if the Conservation Commission would approve the keeping of these animals where the owner had requested. Mm -hmm. I believe it was back in July, the board, when they met, uh, the Board of Health, when it met, put a demand on the applicant to fulfill the filing requirements or that we would act. So that did motivate a um, the application proceeded with the Conservation Commission. The Conservation Commission has approved the, the permit 
and has established where those animals will be kept. And what the commission did approve is a new location further from the resource areas, the wetlands, and um, it, need, it needs to get built now. There's no okay. performance requirement on when it has to be built. And I think that becomes a discussion matter for this board um, because we do have this pending application and you know it would be nice to move it. I don't think it's a lot of work. Um, so, and we wanna get these animals you know, in the proper location. So the board could consider requiring those uh, the rebuild of the animal enclosure in accordance with the order of conditions from the Conservation Commission to occur within a time frame. So it could be 30 days, 45 days, or 60 days. Uh, the only thing I'd caution on the 60 days is, is that, you know, with, you know, it could put us out putting into cold weather. The nice thing about, you know, if you think about the 45 days, um, it does allow for some leeway. It puts us, you know, sometime in, in early November um, and, you know, still a little bit of time to go before things get, you know, or can get colder. Now, what about the Agricultural Commission, Chris? So what we would encourage um, the applicant to do, and I can certainly do that by reaching out to Sugaduchi at the Ag Commission, is to work with him within the rebuilt area to see if, you know, he wants to modify the number of animals kept. Um, because we know that there is an excess number of animals um, there now. He has done a good job with keeping them in. We do not see them loose. Um, That's great. We know that there's a neighbor that has chickens and I see those out and those are not his, but, um, and he has kept them clean. Um, but you know, because of the irregular shape of the existing pen versus what is built now, I'm not entirely sure if this is comparable or smaller. So that will, um, needs to, he should be working on that with, with the ag commission during that time to see if, um, you know, he should modify his number. Okay. I can make um, that I no, any vote of the board. Um, but if the board is going to allow more time, then I would request um, a, a vote. Okay. Um, uh, Richard, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, no, I don't have any. Okay. Uh, Emily, Michelle, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, question for Chris. So a clarification. If we are so inclined as a board, we're going to vote to to table it for a period of time, or you're suggesting we vote to require reconstruction of the animal enclosure? So I would request tabling. Um, okay. And, you know, with a time frame of not to exceed 45 days to build so that we can act on this permit in this calendar year. Permit application. Okay. Okay. Got it. Thank so you. just just for more clarification, the Conservation Commission is the one that has said, you build this in a new location. The actual design of that new structure you're hoping that they seek the agricultural commission's advice on that to make sure that it's adequate for the number of animals that he intends to keep okay so from the board of health's perspective the action that we need to take today is what do we want to you know with with the animals existing in their location that needs to get relocated does the board want to use the pending status of his domestic animal permit as a means to facilitate the relocation of those animals because there is no time frame within the order of conditions that was issued by the Conservation okay. Commission? So the way that we would word this is we would be making a motion to for the um, folks at 709, it's uh, Antonio Raposo and Pa Raposo at 709 Russell Mills Road to complete the new animal enclosure within the next 45 days. Is that what you're, would that be adequate, Chris? If that's the consensus of the board, that would advantage the board to get the animals moved so that we could act on it in this calendar year. Okay, so um, I will make that motion um, I, that um, 
And you guys can always not, you know, second it or or offer a different motion. But I'll make the motion that uh, the the Board of Health uh, is requesting the animal enclosure, the new animal enclosure at um, 709 Russell Mills Road for Antonio Raposo and Paul Raposo, Plat 39, Lot 11, to be completed within the next 45 days. Is there a second? I second that motion. Thank you. Michelle Keith votes yes. Richard Romero, how do you vote? I vote yes. And Emily Michelle, how do you vote? Yes. Fantastic. And hopefully they do it. They, they seem to really care a lot about their animals. So hopefully they do that. And it does make sense, Chris, to get it done before December because then once the snow comes in and the ground is frozen, it's so much harder to do these things. I agree. Yeah. So we're moving on to the next one. This is the one where I can't vote on this one. It's the uh, uh, Part B of the Old Business Continued Manual Mogor Flat 169, Lot 80 at 43 Maycomber Ave Domestic Animal Permit for two Nigerian dwarf goats, five ducks, and 23 chickens. Chris, do we have an update? Uh, thank you. So this was, um, I think this might go back to even almost early August or July. Um, yeah, I think it's past July because I couldn't vote the last two meetings. Yes. And we, so we couldn't vote on it because Emily wasn't there and then Richard wasn't there. And I can't vote. So we it, it, it's been since June, really, that we've taken any action at all. So, you know, even with this delay, you know, I guess, you know, that's to the board's advantage. Um, it is to the board's advantage because, you know, we have not voted to install a full permit. And since that time when we did go out there uh, about two months ago, uh, there have been no complaints about the keeping of animals at this location. So we've had an extended opportunity to review this great. and all as well. That's great news. So, like I said, I have to stay out of this. So if somebody else could make a motion and second, and then I have to recuse myself and abstain from voting. Okay. And can I ask a quick question? Mm -hmm. So, Chris there's, Chris, there's no concerns whatsoever. And the only reason this is delayed is because of conflict of interest and uh, and, and uh, uh, number of quorum, I guess. Right? That is correct. Yes. Okay. Then I will move to approve the animal permit for... Um, uh, plot 169, lot 180 at 43 Macmore Ave, um, uh, finding that there are uh, no concerns with the animal permit here. Nice second emotion. And Emily, Michelle, how do you vote? Yes. And Richard, how do you vote? I vote yes. And Michelle Keith abstains. So that's dynamite. Is there any other item that we have to discuss, Chris? Uh, not at this time. Thank you. Fantastic. Everybody be well, be well. Oh, uh, wait, we got to move to close the meeting. Oh, yeah. Or adjourn the meeting. Adjourn the meeting. Yep. <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Long day. Here we go. Um, could I have a, uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I second. second, that motion. second. Okay. Michelle Keith votes yes. Emily Michelle, how do you vote? Yes. Yes. And uh, Richard, how do you vote? I vote yes. Okay. Everybody be well. Take care. Bye. Enjoy the last bit of summer. Bye,